When it comes to action movies, many people look to the 1980s with fondness, and rightly so. But the 1990s was also a golden age of the kind of dad core action we keep returning to every year. The 90s gave us such notable bangers as Terminator 2 Judgment Day, The Last Boy Scout, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and potentially the greatest film ever made in John Woo's Hard Target. Unfortunately, many action flicks of that decade also managed to slip through the net and failed to reach the same kind of notoriety as the aforementioned hits. We're here today to help fix that. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture, and here are 10 overlooked and underappreciated 90s action movies. Number 10. Sudden Death Throughout the 1990s, Jean-Claude Van Damme starred in many, many action movies. Sadly, not all of these were hard target levels of quality, I mean, what is, but there were still a lot of great ones that featured the muscles from Brussels doing all sorts of cool kicks and, well, just being cool, such as Nowhere to Run and Universal Soldier. But we're not here to spotlight either of those movies today. No, 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 it's time to talk about the excellent but criminally overlooked Sudden Death. Terror goes into overtime, time, time, time. During an NHL Stanley Cup game, a hockey arena is taken over by terrorists. Holding the vice president hostage, they threaten to blow up the whole building with everyone in it. Unfortunately for these bad apples though, the arena's fire inspector is Darren McCord, and his children also happen to be in attendance. Basically die hard at a hockey game, and given my only other experience of hockey is watching the friends of Eddie Coyle, I gotta tell you, this was an infinitely happier watch. Number 9. Broken Arrow Broken Arrow actually did very well at the box office when it dropped in 1996, but like many of director John Woo's American efforts, this one is unfortunately under Rated. This is partially because it's sandwiched in between the director's two objective best Hollywood works, the aforementioned Hard Target, promise this is the last time I bring it up, maybe, and Face Off, which paired John Travolta with Nicolas Cage to deliver one of the wildest and most delirious action movies ever made. Broken Arrow deserves a way stronger rep than it currently has, because even if it's not Hard Target levels of good, it's still John Woo working his magic against the backdrop of some John John Ford-esque landscapes with John Travolta doing all his John travolta goodness. Featuring a Travolta performance that's just as good as his turn in face-off, Broken Arrow focuses on the efforts of a US Air Force pilot, Captain Riley Hale, played by Christian Slater, to thwart the scheme of his former co-pilot turned adversary, Major Vic Deacons, played by Travolta, to hold a US city hostage via stolen nuclear weapons. Travolta's villainous turn in Broken Arrow is hilariously quotable, and is is paired perfectly with one of Hans Zimmer's best compositions. It may lack in Wu's signature gunplay, but the core dynamic between Hale and Deacons is the closest Wu's US films came to capturing the kind of intimate male relationships that were a key feature of his Hong Kong works. Number 8. The Rookie Hollywood veteran Clint Eastwood directed and starred in The Rookie. This cop thriller came out right at the start of the decade in January of 1990. The movie boasts over twice as many stunt people as actors, and this little tidbit sets the tone. Eastwood is supported by Raul Julia and a young Charlie Sheen. Fresh-faced, straight-laced, and by-the-book rookie detective Ackerman, Sheen, is teamed with tough, time-served auto-theft detective Polovsky, Clint Eastwood. The older detective's previous partner was killed by Strom, who Raul Julia plays, the leader of a car theft ring. The case has now been reallocated to homicide, taking it out of the grizzled cop hands, but Polovsky refuses to let up on his pursuit of Strom, and together with his rookie partner, they set out to take down his empire, no matter the consequences. The rookie won't go down as Eastwood's greatest work, obviously, but as a straight-up action flick, it does its job. Number 7. China O'Brien This is high-kicking martial arts sensation Cynthia Rothrock in her most famous role outside of Hong Kong. Rothrock, alongside genre mainstays Richard Norton and Keith Cook, delivers a classic action romp that just seemed to disappear with the decline of home video. After giving a self-defense demonstration to a gang of thugs in an alleyway, big city cop China fatally shoots a young man. Unable to live with the consequences of her actions, she quits her job and moves back to her small hometown. Upon arrival, she finds that a lot has changed since she's left, with organized crime and corruption running through almost every aspect of the town. After her father, one of the last honest cops left in town, is killed, O'Brien swears revenge and campaigns to become the sheriff. 
Number 6. Crime Story Unconnected to Jackie Chan's Police Story series, 1993's Crime Story was also something of a departure for the Hong Kong actor, who, until that point, had mainly plied his trade developing balls to the wall action comedies where the Jackie Chan stunt team would hurt themselves for our entertainment. While well received, it isn't as highly regarded or as well known as the first three Police Story films, with Crime Story marking a rare foray into the dramatic for Chan as his character. Character Eddie investigates a kidnapping against a Hong Kong property mogul. The film, directed by Kirk Wong, was inspired by the real life kidnapping of businessman Teddy Wang. While less humorous than Chan's previous efforts, Crime Story doesn't skimp when it comes to action. In many ways, it's Chan and his most frenetic, with the film featuring some outrageous vehicular stunts and action choreography. Police Story it ain't, but I still think Crime Story deserves more credit. Number 5. Live Wire When you think about it, it's kind of wild that Live Wire didn't get a theatrical release. The film, which focuses on an FBI EOD expert as he attempts to put a stop to a new wave of bombings ignited by liquid explosive that looks just like water, featured a pre-GoldenEye Pierce Brosnan lead role and also included appearances from Philip Baker Hall and Ben Cross. It is far from Brosnan's best acting performance, with the madcap premise and inventive action set pieces, one of which involves a sopping wet Brosnan wheeling an exploding terrorist clown away from a fundraiser gathering more than warrant a watch. Number 4. Fire Down Below By 1997, Steven Seagal had put together a pretty good body of work. I mean, I say good. His endearingly pathetic tough guy shtick, arguably best embodied by films like Hard to Kill and Marked for Death was entertaining. After 1997, however, things had well and truly nosedived. Before it went all downhill for the Aikido Master, however, there was Fire Down Below. In the film, Seagal plays an undercover EPA agent who arrives at a small town to investigate suspected toxic waste dumping. In the Appalachian town, he finds himself up against hostile residents, crooked cops, and evil fat cats who are all involved in the secret environmental crimes. It's up to Big Steve to save the day and all of nature. Fire Down Below is arguably the last genuinely good Seagal fronted movie. We're treated to plenty of explosions, car crashes, and lots of people getting good, sound, and well-deserved beatings. Number 3. Drive 1997 You know which movie goes incredibly hard? Drive. No, not Nicholas Winding Refn's stylish 2011 neo-noir. I mean the Mark Dacascos-led 1997 banger directed by Steve Wang. Another straight-to-video effort from the decade, Drive is one of the best examples of why folks shouldn't sleep on films that don't make it to theaters. It features Dacascos, who you may recognize as the main antagonist in John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum, at his 90s peak, playing a Hong Kong agent on the run from Chinese authorities before the British handover in 97. With great action scenes and Dacascos reminding us all of how unfair it was that he wasn't a bigger deal during his peak, Drive is a must-watch for the discerning connoisseur of 90s action. Number 2. Last Man Standing John McClane will always be Bruce Willis's greatest action performance, but there are plenty of non-diehard action movies featuring the actor that are pretty brilliant too. Tony Scott and Shane Black's The Last Boy Scout is perhaps Willis's best non mclean role in the genre, but one that has been slept on comparatively is Last Man Standing, Walter Hill's 1996 remake of Yojimbo set during the Prohibition era. Hill's film has a darker edge to both Kurosawa's original and Leone's western remake, A Fistful of Dollars, which was met with criticism upon its release. Tonal misgivings aside, and they really don't blemish the movie, trust me, Walter Hill is a master the director, and seeing Willis rocking twin 45s as he shoots gangsters makes for a great time. Last Man Standing has always been one of my favorite performances of his, and it's a shame it isn't spoken about more. Number 1. Rapid Fire Ugh, Brandon Lee should have been a star. The son of the legendary Bruce Lee and also having studied martial arts, Brandon Lee rose to attention in the late 1980s with a few Hong Kong movies before he made the leap to Hollywood. His first leading Hollywood role was opposite the perennially underestimated Dolph Lundgren in 1991's Showdown in Little Tokyo, and the other was this gem. In the film, Lee plays Jake Lowe, a disenchanted but gifted art student who witnesses the killing of a drug lord at the hands of a mafia man called Serrano. Lowe reluctantly agrees to go into hiding until he can testify against the killer. 
The agents at the safe house, however, are corrupt, and Jake is forced to go on the run. Our hero does not know who he can trust, that is, until he meets determined detective Mace Ryan, played by Powers Booth. Ryan becomes akin to a father figure. Together, they team up to take down the bad guys once and for all. Both Showdown in Little Tokyo and Rapid Fire do a great job of reminding us what we lost when Lee sadly passed away during the making of The Crow. It's a huge shame we didn't get to see more of the actor, and that these films didn't get a better reception when they first released. And those were 10 overlooked and underappreciated 90s action movies. Do you have any personal faves of the decade that you think deserve a re-evaluation? Sound off in the comments below, and while you're down there, if you could shoot us a like and a subscribe, that would be super duper appreciated. I've been Ewan, this has been What Culture, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!